it's important for a suit to fit you. This is, of course, not the most important thing in life, but clothes can really say a lot about a person. How old are clothes? If we count from prehistoric times, then clothes are tens of thousands of years old. And what is their main function? It's just the same, to protect people from the environment. But protection depends on the environment. There are special clothes. They make a person invulnerable to fire, cold, and a complete lack of atmosphere. Super suits are for empowering people with super abilities. In this film, we will show you such super suits. Space suits. Fireman suits. Powered exoskeletons. Super suits in the project experiments. This prototype of a modern spacesuit is a diving suit. Of course, plunging into the depths is not something like going into space. But there are similar features. There's a difference in pressure inside and outside the suit. Lack of atmosphere, cold, even the origin of the word sivre, which is a verb to follow. And these are modern spacesuits. There's an excellent collection in the museum at SPE Zvezda, an enterprise for which over half a century is engaged in the development of life support systems and various spacesuits. One of the main misconceptions about spacesuits is that they all can get a man into space. But it's not true. There are aerospace suits. They are used by pilots for high altitude flights. And there are spacesuits, protective and for outer space. Protective suits, for example, this Sokol, are put on by the cosmonauts during takeoff, landing, docking, and undocking with the ISS. And the one for outer space, for example, this one, Orlan, are worn by the cosmonauts when they get beyond the orbital station. These two types of spacesuits are often confused, although they share some obvious external differences. Color, size, name. And even more than that, it is believed that in the protective one, for example, you can work in space. But this is absolutely unacceptable. The suit Sokol is an insurance in case of an emergency, for example, or depressurization of the descending vehicle. The spacesuit Orlan is only for work in space, and they are not interchangeable. Like, you can't interchange the car and the train. These are just two super suits for different tasks. Any technology goes through the stages of modernization. Developed in the early 80s, the Orlan suit first had a prefix D, then DM, then in the 90s it received the letter M, then MK, and now, Orlan MKS, its new modification, is being tested. I tried to put Orlan MKS on. More precisely, I'll try to put myself inside it. A spacesuit is actually a miniature space station. Everything necessary for life and work of a man in space is here. But before you start, you have to change into another extra suit. This is a liquid-cooled suit. There are a lot of tubes inside through which fluid runs, and it actually removes heat, cools the human body when it is in a spacesuit. I'm not going to be hot. So what do I have here? First, a liquid-cooled suit. Secondly, there's underwear under it. A shirt with a high collar and pants. It's all made of cotton. Socks and gloves as well. Balaclava with headphones and a microphone. The protruding tubes are the docking of the water cooling system to the suit pump. 
wires connect to the communication. The latest generation spacesuit Orlan MKS and the cosmonaut are ready. Great, you can start entering the spacesuit. You can't call it anything but entering. I will try to do everything as slowly as possible so as not to make any mistakes. Well, we will control it. Hands and feet go down. Put in the head. So, well, as far as I can see, everything is fine. You can turn on the ventilation. Now I'll turn it on. Okay. And we can close the door. By the way, the door looks like a knapsack or a backpack, is a container for most of the spacesuit systems. So, we're closing, tighten, that's it, I'm inside. What is it like to be in a spacesuit? We will find out a bit later. In the meantime, that's what will be in the next part. Is exoskeleton a rehabilitation medical equipment? or the future vehicle for all humanity. Fireman suit. We conduct an experiment. What temperature the person can sustain inside. Program experiments and real super suits. To be continued. This is a Russian exoskeleton, the cheapest in the world. The nearest American analog is 10 times more expensive. Well, that's just for comparison. Exoskeleton comes from the Greek outer and skeleton. The name does not quite accurately convey the meaning of this device. The skeleton consists of the same bones, and here are still artificial muscles that allow this device to move itself and the human body. A bit of history. In the 1950s, a prototype of an industrial exoskeleton was created. We saw what it is in the movie Alien. Such a man plus a powerful loader performing all his actions. It didn't enter production. In the 1970s, a prototype of a rehabilitation exoskeleton appeared. This is exactly what we will test today. It did enter production. And finally, recently in the 21st century, the development of the military exoskeleton began. In the long term, it will be approximately the same as that of a well-known hero of comics and cinema. True, apparently in the very distant future. But whether it will enter production or not, this apparently will be a very big secret for a long time. The problem of any exoskeleton is that it must be lightweight and powerful. Not only the exoskeleton moves itself, it is created to move a person weighing 170 to 220 pounds. The main idea was to make a rehabilitation exoskeleton so that people who had a misfortune of a different kind, this could be a spinal injury, it could be a stroke, it could be a brain trauma, or some other peculiarities related to a locomotor disorder functions, so that they have a chance to return to normal life, get back on their feet, walk independently. A couple of years ago, Sergei had a spinal compression fracture. After the operation, there was only a wheelchair. Exoskeleton for him is not a full replacement of his legs, but what is called rehabilitation in medicine. As if a reminder to the body, remember, that's how you can stand, walk, move your legs, sit down. And although an exoskeleton itself makes the movement for you, but the signals constantly fly to the brain. My feet walk. And there's, now there will be another medical term, feedback form. That is, a little by little, the entire body, as if forcibly, is trained to walk again. At this stage, the exoskeleton can hardly replace a wheelchair. But in the long run, if the work continues, new technologies, new materials will appear. It's quite possible. And here I also get lost in the formulations. How to say correctly, put on an exoskeleton, get into an exoskeleton. 
Now we will dress you in an exoskeleton. You sit here. Like a normal chair? Yes. Okay. Even if a person can walk independently, it is unlikely that he will be able to get dressed in this device without assistance. Exhale. I exhaled. It's necessary to tighten everything. It really does resemble a corset. Yes. Can you breathe? I can breathe for now. Now, the exoskeleton is controlled either with a tablet or buttons on the crutches. But since I'm an inexperienced pilot, the first option is for me, another person's management. I'll secure you from behind, don't worry. Good. Go. One, two, three. Get up. Wow, God. Yes. Actually, it's quite tough. Okay, and put the crutches slightly forward. Yeah. Let's just say, the sensations are very strange. It's really a mechanism that bends your legs for you, rearranges them for you, even makes you turn right, left. The crutches, because the center of gravity of the device is approximately in the middle, so you have to lean forward and lean on them. Otherwise, I really do not make any effort to walk. Moreover, the exoskeleton does not allow me to do this. Here is just the case when the machine is stronger than man. Wow. Well, I don't know the other modes, but landing and getting up, in my opinion, are the most difficult. Here, in fact, the chair is very low. Usually you should get up when sitting at 90 degrees, but here it is as if you get up from a pit. Well, how did I do? Well, okay, excellent. Even excellent. Well, I almost did not hold you. The exoskeleton is, of course, a supersuit. But in the future, for now, it hasn't reached an optimal combination of weight and power. As a means of rehabilitation and prevention, it is ideal. As a full replacement for a wheelchair, no. Its battery life is enough for only a few hours. It can't climb stairs and generally overcome obstacles. By the way, how's the suit going? We stopped at the moment when I climbed inside. So what? What are the first sensations? The suit is completely unfit for working on Earth. Well, that is under gravity conditions. For example, the spacesuit Orlan MKS weighs 243 pounds. If it were not for a special support device, this one, I would have been lying on the floor a long time ago, just crushed by the weight of this system. In general, what can you compare this supersuit with? With a bath escape, a spaceship. Strangely enough, the simplest thing is to compare it with a ball for sport. Any ball, as a rule, has two shells, the internal chamber and the outer tire. The chamber holds the pressure, the tire protects the chamber. One cannot work without the other. So the suit consists of internal insulating and external protective layers. There are a lot more of them than in a ball, but the function is the same. The original device Valsalva, the one that is now near my chin, can be mistaken for, well, let's call it a nose scratcher. Well, that's what it is. That's when you want to scratch your nose. Then you can do it like this. But in reality, this device is designed to blow the astronaut, like to level the pressure, so as not to put pressure on the ears. This is done in this way. Here is a nose that is pressed to two sides. Here I press my nose to to two sides and just blow air in the nose. That's it. And you blow. Roughly, the same thing happens on a plane when it gains altitude or, on the contrary, descends to the ground. Well, I just can't do this with my hands. What are other systems that are placed in the Orlon MKS space suit? And what do all these buttons and toggle switches turn on or off? We'll find out later. In the meantime, fireman suit. What temperature can it withstand? And what kind of fire can you handle? Super suits in the program experiments. To be continued.
So, we have already seen a lot of super suits, but which one is the most popular? The one that doesn't burn in fire. Officially, this suit is called Fighting Suit of a Fireman. There are several variants of these suits, but one that withstands the highest temperatures is here with a heat reflecting effect. We will test it today. I will go through several tests. Extinguishing wood pile wood, called a model hearth. Extinguishing fire indoors. And extinguishing liquid fuel outdoors. And every time I will be protected by this super suit. After all, do you allow me to wear this suit? Yes, we will, because during the obstacle course, let's call it so, you will be accompanied by professionals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting dressed. Basically, if to put it briefly, the fireman's clothes are first and foremost thermal insulation. So it is very hot in them. Thick pants, thick jacket. The laws of physics cannot be fooled. What protects you from heat also keeps the temperature of your body in. Done. So we set the model hearth on fire. Ignite. We must wait until the firewood is kindled and fight. For better visualization, in addition to normal ones, I will shoot with high speed and thermal imaging cameras. Hold on to this, press from above. The second hand on the nozzle, forward. Yeah. Closer to the heart, and more intense. To the other side. Well, that's it, it seems. Somewhere else it's still crackling. Well, it's considered not a very dangerous fire center, and I didn't even feel the temperature of the flame in the suit. Immediately, the second test comes. There are a lot of fires in the transport container. It will be difficult. In the combat clothing of a fireman and heat reflecting suit, the heat actually is not noticeable. The only but very significant minus is that I do not have an autonomous breathing system. And it's difficult to breathe in this atmosphere. More precisely, it is almost impossible. I'll try to save breathing. We'll proceed to extinguishing. On the right, we take a fire extinguisher. And we start from a distant hearth. So, with stops and not noticing much in the smoke, I coped with the flame. Once again, in such a hell, if you are dressed in a super suit, the temperature isn't dangerous, but carbon monoxide is. Well, I'm alive, but I inhaled a little bit of the gas. But I don't know what I could do there without it. I was fine to walk in there and back. How's the body? Are there no, like, burns? Hands a little. And everything else is fine. We move on to the third goal. <laughs> right away. Right away. Let's go. The last and most dangerous test. Combustion of liquid fuel. There are different items near the fire source. Table, chair, clothes hanger. So you can see how strong the heat is now. First, I'll just walk around by the fire. And now the fire must be extinguished. Ha ha! <laughs> it took less than five seconds.
So, in the combat clothing of a fireman and a heat-reflecting suit, even the temperature of an open flame is not felt. True, it's not for long. And I did not notice, but that's what happened to the suit after passing through the flame. But I did not feel it. There it is. The whole top has melted and on the right as well. Different suits are designed for different temperatures, from 390 to 1,470 degrees Fahrenheit, and not for a long time. Otherwise, if it were not for the carbon monoxide inside the container, we can say that everything ended up more than well. Beginner Rescue has completed all tasks. Beginner Rescue is ready to depart. Congratulations on trial by fire. No, it's hot, hot, of course. By the way, what happened to the spacesuit? We stopped at the fact that I climbed in and began to study the purpose of buttons, toggle switches, and devices. Shall we continue? Well, for example, the light on the helmet is turned on by this toggle switch. That's it. Once. And turn off. Two. By the way, unlike in most fantastic movies, or more precisely, unlike in almost all fantastic movies, light inside the suit and the helmet can't be turned on. It's just not there. And another suit device. Automatic thermal control system. That's how it turns on. This was done for the first time in the Orlan MKS spacesuit and was first done in all the spacesuits in the world. Prior to this, such a system did not exist. The system naturally, as the name implies, supports a certain temperature that is comfortable for an astronaut. But if he still feels a bit cold or a bit hot, he can correct this temperature with this toggle switch. It says cold and warm. By the way, in order for you to see immediately the purpose of all buttons, tumblers, and switches of the Orlan MKS spacesuit, we made such a scheme. Helmet, two lamps, the device for self-closing and opening the door hatch spacesuit from the back, control panel for electrical equipment, below the closing of the door is the control unit for the pneumatic units of the spacesuit, Ventilation is for the surface use of a spacesuit, safe fitting. Switching on of the emergency indication device duplicates the readings on the display. Manometer shows the pressure in the suit. Then comes a toggle switching from onboard power to autonomous power. Control circuit of temperature and ventilation circuit. Computer monitor and control of radio station, thermal regulation and pressure. Pipes on the right are an electro wire and a connection when the spacesuit is still inside the space station. Safety harnesses, one constant length, another variable, up to 3.3 yards. It seems that's it. Okay, you can go out. Now I'll help the fingers out. Oh, it's hard work to pull a man out of a spacesuit. Yes, yes, yes. I'm getting out, getting out. Wow. I got out. You can undock everything, all systems. So well, the job was successfully completed. More than an hour or so I spent inside the suit. Yes. This is an impressive period of time, and I think you felt what it means to work inside a spacesuit. We are used to seeing supersuits in fantastic films, and it turns out that they do exist. Their task is to empower people with super abilities, but not for fictional missions and tasks, but for quite specific ones for work in those conditions where, without such protection, anyone cannot last for more than a few seconds. And what other powers do supersuits have? We'll show them to you.